Hi, I'm Richard West and I've been asked by the Photographer Academy to take you through how to calibrate your video screens as well. So not just the screens you're going to be using for stills photography, but basically if we're all getting into videography or getting into shooting video on our DSLRs or maybe already using video cameras to shoot perhaps weddings as well as taking those stills photographs, then basically putting you into a situation where you're screens, your video monitors, your TV playback screens and your video playback screens are equally as well calibrated as you can get on your computers is a great situation. It really means that when you're showing off your work you're not getting into that situation of it looking fantastic in the stills but then when you get to video it looking not the same. So that's what we're trying to address here and basically Data Color have brought out their new Spider HD solution in order to do this. So we have a, a great solution here, which includes the Spider HD calibrator for screens, it includes the Spider Checker and the Spider Cube as well, two other products from Data Color, in order to improve that whole workflow in the video in the video DSLR environment. So the solution comes with a, a bunch of uh, DVDs and software. First of all, you need to load the software, it's Mac or PC, so get that software loaded into your computer, such that we've got something there ready to run the software and run the calibration. What we then do is we, we need a, a DVD player connected to our playback monitor. So this could be the playback monitor you're using connected to generally video cameras, or it could be something that you're using specifically to run through video from DVD or from uh, some other video source purely for your, your customers playback or for you to use as a showcase. So we're going to be putting into the DVD player one of the many DVD uh, lookup tables that come with the software, that come with the, the Spider HD solution. So in this case we've, we've popped in our, our PAL based DVD which has lookup charts in there but you've also got uh, Blu-ray and NTSC versions in the, the same pack. And from there we're going to go to run the software. So we start the software off on the computer and then run the equivalent charts on here. So the spider is connected via the cradle that comes with the spider to the screen, but it's also plugged into the computer. So the software is running on the computer and it's reading the colors from the screen. From here it's going to run a bunch of test patterns, which then we work down until we get to that finished final result on the computer software. And then we can adjust the settings within your TV or your video playback monitor controls to get that perfectly set up. So let's have a look at the software. So here we've got the, the Spider Elite HD software popped open. So we're going to be first of all having a look because the same software can now run to calibrate your computer based screens where you may be doing retouching or video um, editing work, but also can be working on your TV and playback displays. So if we click in this case onto the TV and Blu-ray uh, calibration setup. We're just going to go on to the next setup and that's going to pop open the HD software. And this is a, a nice easy to follow setup. Gives you a whole bunch of prompts that are going to get you into a situation of setting up your displays correctly and accurately but with as little fuss as possible. So it takes you first of all in the splash screen through what we're going to be looking to address with your displays. And then gives you a whole bunch of tick boxes. So you need to tick these through first just to make sure that you've actually set up your your TV, your Blu-ray or your video display correctly in the first place in order to run the calibration. So we know that we've done this in this particular situation so we're just going to click through here and lastly just allow some time in order to do this. I'm going to pop in a, a name now as well so we're going to call this our um, playback screen one. Save that and then we're going to run through the steps of the process. So again here, in this instance, we're going to be uh, calibrating this uh, LED TV. So we just choose that from the, the list of options. Pop into, it's, it's chosen what it is actually as far as the screen is concerned in this instance. And then basically we're going to look into uh, any settings that we haven't got control of within our scenario, but we have in all the, all the settings capabilities here for this particular display. So follow the instructions and then just carry on following through the instructions. At this point, we need to make sure that we've got our uh, spider 
carefully attached to our screen with the expanding uh, cradle setup. Basically, this, this uh, is easily done and it just zips to different sizes such that uh, depending on what size of uh, display or TV screen you've got, it can easily be accommodated for that different size. Then we go over to starting to work in conjunction with the, the DVD that you're playing on your playback device, on your DVD or Blu-ray device, basically. So you do need this connected to any screen, even, even if this is a, a playback screen you would normally use just to play back from camera. You need to be able to connect a DVD or Blu-ray player to it. And there's different uh, lookup charts uh, DVDs that come with the, um, uh, with the software in the uh, HD pack in order to enable that. So first and foremost, let's um, have a look and check that uh, we've got the Blu-ray running. What we need to do here is just pop on the, the first test pattern. So in the, on the uh, Blu-ray DVD player itself, we just need to choose the test patterns, choose the black pattern, and that takes us into that first screen. And what we're going to do, in a very similar process to what you would use in general calibration of any other device, we're going to look at setting the black point and the white point first of all. And start running through the software, basically. Again, giving you some useful pointers in there just to make sure you've got no serious inclement light on the, the device. And now we're going to just follow the instructions again. So it's going to take you through running different patterns here. So we're just going to move on to the um, white pattern on screen. And read the same reading again, basically. And as you can see, we start working through the, the setup here, basically, and start adjusting our, our setup on the, uh, the software and combination of what's working on the TV in order to hone down the, the end result. Ultimately, what we're going to end up with once we've worked through the entire process, where we've tested the contrast and adjusted the temperature, the brightness, color, tint, we'll end up with a, a report, basically, that tells you how you need to set up the controls on your video monitor or playback monitor or TV in order to give you the right end result. So that's what we're getting here. We're seeing the, the final summary report. You can print that off as part of the software. But the key thing then is to just go into that display controls and set them to the figures that you've, you've worked out here. And in that instance, basically, that means you've now got into that situation where you're controlling that color. So ultimately, once you've run through the process, you've ended up with your screen, your playback screen, your TV, set correctly to a calibrated environment. And then you've got a whole range of different test patterns that you can use within the uh, lookup table software, the, the, the Blu-ray discs that you get with your Spider HD, in order to see how it was before and how it was after you've calibrated your screen. Important thing, basically, is just to get this done such that when you're using your playback devices and you're showing work to any customer or to yourself when you're, when you're trying to work through and make sure you've got that crisp calibration correct on those colors in the same way that you do in, in stills photography, this is the tool to use. So there we go. Thank you.